Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors on Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here on this Friday morning. January 3rd, 2020. I got to get used to saying 2020. I know you have too. And we don't sign as many checks as we used to, but I, I know as always in January, the hard thing to do is get back to, to uh, doing the right year. So anyway, uh, not much check writing going on these days. So let's get started. on Our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. We're looking at uh, some rain today, a high, high of 72 and low of 57. Water temperature is 62. And that's, you know, staying cool, and that's about where we expect it now. River readings, the Appalachian Gold of Blunstown, 13.4, and the Choctatchee Careville, 7.4 this morning. Our tide chart looking good. We're uh, in pretty good tides. Low tide this morning, 819, and the high tide this afternoon at 521. We're looking at the winds. We've had some windy days here starting off the year, and even during the Christmas break, we had some pretty strong wind. So we had a couple of pretty days. I hope you took advantage of them. The day is coming out south-southwest at about 15 or 16. And not looking much better tomorrow, early part of next week. So got some windy weather coming up. So be aware of that. Wherever you get, you know, if you're planning a weekend around some uh, outdoor activities, I always look at a wind direction, especially if I'm going to be around a boat, even if fishing uh, other other areas or in hunting. and. Uh, we're talking about how important the wind is when you hunt and all. So it's it's going to be like a windy, windy weekend. But just be aware of it. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. I'm going to start with this section. I've got a picture here, but it's from someone I know. You know a lot of times we think in wintertime, everything just sort of lays down. The, we don't have any snakes or spiders or or any kind of, every, everything just sort of lays down and, and bears and everything. But in Florida, we have everything still moving around. And she uh, she posted this on, on our Facebook, and it's, this is it right here. This is from Sherry Miller Cooper. She lives up there in Lake Talabana, but she grew up there right north on Abe Chester Road up there on Highway 12. I worked in my flower garden today, and Coop, that's her husband, discovered a black widow spider on the sleeve of my sweater while we were moving a bird bath, and I nearly danced a jig. A bite from black widow can make one very sick. Thankful that this monster did not bite me. Needless to say, the monster is now deceased. And a little fuzzy picture, but that's that's what the black widow looks like. And this is right up here in, in Gaston County, and it's, it, they're all over. And I I got thinking about you know on the black widow we we get a uh, uh, I'm gonna show you this is a, here's a picture of a bite how a black widow spider bite. See, it's like two little it's two little puncture wounds right there, and it's not. It's not something to be taken lightly. Now, what what the black widow will do? It's usually not fatal. Uh, it, it can make you really sick, make you nausea, affect your nervous system. I wrote down some of the systems: uh, breathing, you're sweating real bad, having difficulty breathing, uh, eyelids swell, rash, you feel weakness, not able to move. It really affects the nervous system. But it's usually not fatal. But it make you really, really sick. And, but now, if it's a child that's been bitten. You really need to get that child to the to medical attention right away, to the hospital emergency room right away, because it can it can be fatal to a small person, to a child. Okay, so be aware of that. I just wanted to show you that kind of stuff happens. Of course, you always think about the brown recluse, and this is the brown recluse. Okay, that that's an ugly spider, but they're around here too, and their bite looks sort of like this. That's the difference. Uh, sort of a, and I've I've seen these before. And you, this is a. It's just like a rash and everything. So that's the two that's the two spider bites we need to be aware of, and I just wanted to, to bring those out to you. Now, let's jump on some deer pictures right away. My buddy, my buddy Mike Edwards, up there north of town, up there uh, in Washington County. That is a fine buck. Mike Edwards, in fact, here, here's, the, uh, here's a couple of other pictures of it, okay? And there it is right there. Now, what's cool, uh, <laughs> Uh, Bill Allen and his son Dalton got on their lease this year. So Bill is on that lease. So you can imagine the hard time I'm going to give Bill about when did you get that one? And Mike Edwards got it before you did. They, they did do take a couple of those. That's a good lease up there. Uh, some good folks in that lease. And uh, uh, that is a fine buck right there. Good job, Mike Edwards. Okay, now let's go. All right, this is my nephew, David Plunkett. 
David uh, runs a golf course up there at outside of Dothan, and uh, this this is what wild hogs do. This is the Fort Rucker uh, military uh, base, and this is their golf course. You know how you know how they take care of the golf course at in a, at a military base. They really try to. Take, this is rooting from a hog. Okay, and so this is this is your fairway on hogs. <laughs> All right, and. Uh, this, this is what, they will destroy a place. This is why we do uh, hog hunting at nine different places. And uh, somebody left, them, we got a ticket, took a picture, somebody left them a $5 bill, I guess, for whoever's cleaning it up. But they're going to have to resaw that whole fairway. And, uh, and so hogs, you can imagine, uh, it's, it's a control situation now because they can do so much damage. So it's fascinating. And that's right there in Dothan at, at Fort Rucker. Okay, let me see, I got a couple more of the pictures. I was jumping from hogs to shark. A 600-pound mako caught in Navarre on December 29th. That is a big, big fish, 600 pounds. I'll be aware of that. Uh, and I showed this recently because it's just recently passed. But go ahead. If you like me, I, I, I get my January. Uh, in January, I try to, if i got anything going on for the whole year, I have like a yearly calendar. So go ahead now for your times. That little green section for scallop season next year, it's going to start on August the 16th and go through September 24th. Now, that's late. We've talked about it uh, continually here on the show since we've done the show about scallop season. So we're going to do it. The FWC has set the date. Now, if you're going to go to Stenhatchee, that's that blue section, the St. Mark's and Stenhatchee area, that's going to start like normal July 1st through September 24th. Uh, and then uh, the rest of them, we don't, a lot of us don't go there. Dixie County, <coughs> June the 15th, okay? That's, that's actually uh, Dixie County be Stenhatchee. So you can go down there June the 15th through Labor Day. That's amazing, isn't it? That's, that's a long season, and I yellow dotted. But anyway, the green dot where most of us go in, here in Panhandle will be August the 16th and all. All right, we're going to take a break. I'm going to come out and do a, I got a, I'm going to make a call to one of our uh, team members here on Panhandle Outdoors. So y'all hang loose. We're going to come back and make this call. All right, welcome back. Now, we've, this is going to be a treat this morning. Guess who we got on the phone? Our buddy Billy Grantham up there in Jackson County. So we're going to get, good morning, Billy. Hey, listen, Billy called me. Was that great timing? But he's up there at work. Uh, we call that work. Tell, tell the folks where you are and what are you doing? Well, this morning, uh, I'm in Appalachian Management Area here at uh, North of Sneeze, the extreme eastern side of Jackson County, uh, at the check station. Uh, chicken hunters in and out, deer hunters, quail hunters, duck season's in, dove season's in. Um, and uh, just managing the post uh, this morning here. Well, that sounds good. First of all, let me go back and ask you, how was your, how was your Christmas and your vacation and everything? Go. Man, Christmas was better than snuff. <laughs> uh, it, it was just fantastic. I got lots of stuff. I leave my wife in charge of buying for all the youngins and the grand youngins and great grand youngins, and I just give her the money, you know. A happy wife, a happy life. That, that, that's true now. So you had everybody at home and all, so uh, you had a good time. Yeah, man. Nobody got the flu or nothing like that. All right. You would mentioned to me, I mentioned right before Christmas break, and I brought this up on the show that y'all just started a little, the rut season a little, it started a little bit early up there. It was under, going on the way, or what, what was it? Well, it was, it, well, yeah, good point. It was picking up. Uh, you, you never know what little bit you see, and if it is the beginning of it, uh, but it is full blown right now. Uh, they have been wearing them out, I, and uh, I got lots of theories as to why it's been so good in here for deer. Is last season was tore up so much, so so much, uh, much of the wood that you couldn't get into uh, that deer weren't taken. Uh, you know, year before last, they had 57 bucks taken. And this year, they're going to break that record uh, again this year. Wow, that's pretty strong. How many acres y'all have up there? Uh, there's under 8,000, but in Zone A right here, there's probably 5,000 acres. But, that's interesting. Uh, now, where, Billy, where are most of the hunters that y'all get? Where are they coming from? 
Well, Jackson County, okay. so, but predominantly local guys. We get them out of Panama City and, and Callaway. We get them on Daytona Beach and Jacksonville. <laughs> we get them from way down state that come up here because the population being like it is down there, uh, so much more pressure to get on a spot. And it's not like Appalachia with woods and water and and farms, fields. Uh, uh, the state leases out part of this hunting land to farmers, and they grow soybeans and peanuts and corn on it, and then they harvest it, and they're required to leave a little of it. Uh, right. But what the deer don't already eat up, as y'all would imagine, uh, it goes on. That's great. Well, real, real quick, uh, I know we got to go, but uh, the fishing and the quail hunting, what's going on with all of that? Ain't much fishing going on right now. It's, it's the hunting season. The quail season hasn't been very well, very good, I should say. Mm -hmm. But it's just kicked off just the other day after the quota went out. Uh, some dove being killed. Uh, I've done some dove hunting in here. And... Uh, and there's a little bit of snipe hunting and, and woodcock. Wow, uh, I, I didn't know anybody. Who, I didn't know anybody still did the snipe and woodcock hunting. That's yep, cool. Yeah, yeah, they still do. Uh, That's cool. Because there's so much water here, there's a good population of them. <laughs> uh, but the deer season has been excellent. They're probably going, like I said earlier, break records. And, uh, and most of the guys don't want me showing off their pictures until after the season goes out. So okay. I'll have to maybe. Maybe you'll have me on the show at the end of the season, and I'll show you some pictures. We're definitely going to do that because Jeff already said he, he's got to get some of that deer meat now. You haven't brought it to him yet. He's, I've he, got freezer full. Uh, <laughs> Matthew Buckshot's been okay. He, he's killing them and wearing them out. I, my, uh, remember what I said about luck? Yep. It's where preparation meets opportunity. I may have to eat my words because I've worked at it. But. Uh, <laughs> Here it comes. Well, buddy, it was great talking to you. I appreciate you calling, and uh, that's a great report from up your way. Yep, yep. Well, thank you. They took, they took as many as seven Tuesday, and they've got as many as six uh, every day. Uh, not every day, but that's, some days. And, uh, wow. That, that's pretty strong. Are they hunting in blinds? And, I mean, deer, are they uh, in ladders, and when they can get in a tree that's not broken down. And, uh, Good deal. Doing some pushing and driving, and uh, uh, they've, they've got, I think, going, we're going to work right at 50 bucks right now. Wow, wow. Yeah. That, that's strong. All right, Billy, good talking to you, buddy. All right, friend. Y'all take care. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye. All right. I love getting those reports from, you know, different places and all because, these you know, these people are on the ground, and they see what's going on and, and what's great. I mean, you're getting it straight from the horse's mouth. Uh but we got, I tell you what, uh, we're going to, uh, one of the things, and, and I, I want to get set up this year, that's one of my uh, ideas I wanted to do, but anyway, let's get back to our pictures real quick. Uh, Jeff, we, they, we're going to get those back up. Uh, Blue Water Tent Sale, I want to go ahead and, and let you know about it, because they, that's one of the big things uh, every year. Okay, uh, right here. 13th Annual Blue Water Tent Sale, go ahead and... Uh, Kelly sent this to me. It's going to be March, right in the middle of the screen, March the 26th through 28th. Go and put that on your, on your calendar. And, yes, uh, I'll get Kelly and, and maybe Bobby to come over here and be on the show. So that's going to be a big one there. All right? And a couple other announcements. I, I remember this. We talked about it right before uh, Thanksgiving. This was stolen. So be on the lookout for it. After hunting season, it may show up. Somebody won't want to sell that thing. So keep an eye out for this, too. Okay, $500 reward. And speaking of the rut, uh, I don't know if I have time to get into it. I, I do want to, I do want to mention it. This, uh, you know, I may just go over this Monday. Uh, let me just go over this Monday. I've got a, I got a couple of others, a couple other deer pictures. Let me show this picture here. This is Hannah too up there in the hunt camp up in Alabama. Hannah is a good outdoor girl, and she can, uh, she can hunt well. She and her twin sister. Uh, Billy too. All, all of them can hunt really good. Talking about neat pictures, I just I don't usually bring pictures from other sources, but this is brilliant. This photographer is called Stealing the Sun. Now, look at that first picture. It looks like he has the sun in his arms. All right, the second picture on the left, bottom left down there, all right, he's he pushing in his car. And the third picture, he has going to close 
the hatch. Now, is that not, is that not cool? I, I just thought that's some great photography. You know how we'd like to talk about good photography in here. Okay, and let's see. Got a, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, let me show one. Talking about duck season, Elizabeth Wingrove, one of my former students living down in Weewall now. She and her boyfriend, Clay Murphy, they went down. Uh, they're good hunters. They're just good outdoorsmen. They're, and they've got a, they went down to Apalachicola Bay. And they know how to hunt. Look at that motor right there. That, that's a shallow running motor. Great job, Elizabeth. I, I text her that she did well, and she says she learned well in outdoor ed, but uh, she's got to get the credit for doing that. That's, that's a great picture from Apalachicola Bay. Okay, uh, let's get ready. Uh, we've got more pictures. We've got to pick them up on, uh, on Monday. But we're going to do a draw. We're going to do our final, final draw out of the jar. And uh, I had not had time. Some of y'all already started sending your names in. That's good. I just haven't had to put them in, so this will be the last. I'm gonna when I draw this. I'm gonna put the other names in the uh, in the trash can. Okay. So here we go. We're going to the winner of the twenty dollar gift certificate, and and we appreciate Tarpon Tarpon Doc doing this. Okay. How about Brewster Cobb from Fountain? Brewster Cobb, twenty dollars, and the big red snapper. Start off the year right with a big red snapper. Dorothy Haney from Parker. So I got found. I'm gonna put this up by trash can. I'm gonna throw this away. And and next Friday we're gonna have our own names in there and all. Okay. So we got those two. All right. Let's take our final break. We're gonna come back and set up for our fishing report for the weekend. We got some uh, good ideas to, to show you. All right. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. We're uh. Getting ready for our fishing port, and we're having some technical difficulties, and I don't know if we're going to be able to pull it all out or not. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about it right now. So we're going to just, we're going to do our fishing report without without Google Earth. How about that, uh, Jeff? You want to put you want me to just cut that TV off or leave the screen up there or what? Uh, I don't know if I can cut it off from here. Okay. All right. Anyway, we'll talk we'll talk about it. Oh look, we got Google Earth. Let me let me go and get started. We're going to run out of time while I'm playing around with this. If it comes up fine, if not, uh, so, so be it. Okay, look, what I wrote down. Uh, first thing I wrote down, hey, the redfish. I've got several reports about what a great week has been on redfish, especially New Year's Day uh, on January 1st. I had two or three different parties. They just caught a lot of redfish and and, and different places too. It was fascinating to uh, to get those reports. So anyway, uh, the redfish really good. Also, the uh, the intercoastal. If you talk about speckled trout, look at there. They came right up to it. Technology is amazing. I, let me just interrupt where I was because this is eagle. This is really what I wanted to show. Eagle Harbor. Now this is filled in. Remember I did that uh, the video uh, yesterday about what, about the state park and all. This is look. This filled in all the way across. So this, this is an old picture. But now this is all blocked off. You cannot walk out in here. So you're going to, if you're going to go, you're going to, to come out of the beach and walk down the beach. Uh, you can still walk down the beach, but you can't walk back into here because this is environmentally sensitive area. So be aware of that. And uh, and if you uh, get a chance to to get down there, it's still a lot of fun, a lot of nice places to go. But anyway, I was going to what I wanted to mention was the intercoastal waterway for speckled trout fishing. Okay, it is in really good shape. The, if you get a chance to go <clears throat> West Bay, put it in the West Bay and all the way along the intercoastal between West Bay and Choctatchee Bay. Of course, you're over on Choctatchee Bay, you can put it in over there too. But uh, it, it's really in, in really good shape. The, uh, the uh, good place to fish is not very focused, is it? But anyway, I, I was going to recommend the, the areas there. Okay, also uh, West Bay. West Bay is going to be good too. West Bay is going to be good fishing uh, this weekend. Uh, North Bay is going to be good. It's going to be really good fishing throughout here. But what I had written down uh, on fresh, okay, let me, I'm jumping back and forth on my notes because I had this difficult to hear with these. Okay, fresh water is going to be strong. The bass tournaments are starting this weekend. Uh, several bass tournaments are starting. So January has always been a really good bass fishing month. And it just starts, it starts off good, then it gets better, of course, as spring comes along. So. Uh, keep in mind, bass fishing is going to be good. But like I said, I've got red fishing is on, on fire. It was a kayaker sent me a report, and also some people by boat sent me a report on catching redfish this past week. Uh, the bridge fishing is going to be good. 
We'll talk about bridge fishing uh, in several places, and you know, one of our favorites, we go down Apalachicola Bay and over to St. George Island. And it is, it, we used to really have some good bridge fishing off the Tenor Bridge, but we don't have that anymore because somebody broke their ankle on it and sued them, so they had to take the bridge down. So anyway, at East Point, the bridge here out of East Point, this bridge is gonna be good for drum. Drum's gonna be good, redfish gonna be good. Surf fishing, surf fishing gonna be strong now. Surf fishing is really, January surf fishing is good. I'm gonna probably be doing some tomorrow for sure down at Cape Sand Blast, if, according to what the weather does. But surf fishing, in fact, the biggest uh, catch up was on January 3rd, I saw uh, Mr. Beach uh, out at the stump hole catch 63, so I saw him catch 63 speckled trout. Now, he was using just peeled shrimp. This was before, before fish bites, but I never will forget that because we were just down there riding around. I saw him up there fishing, walked up to him, and I, Mr. Beach, he's passed away down from Youngstown, and he just loved to fish. He had a five-gallon bucket, old school, and he'd call, he he didn't catch a race any. He kept all, he was only 63. They were still biting when he left. So, so all, you know, I learned a lesson way back then about Catching or uh, whiting in January in the winter time has been really good, so that's going to be good. The uh, the surf fishing also saw some pompano caught. You saw the picture of Mike McGraw caught some pompano, so fish is going to be good. We just talked a bit about the rut, and we're going to talk about the rut on Monday show about how the rut's being affected. It's very effective here in this area in January, so this outdoor reporting is going to be stronger. So the intercoastal waterway, like I said earlier, intercoastal waterways may be good for speckled trout. The surf fishing will be good, and the bass fishing is going to be good. Those are, those will be the highlights of uh, this weekend. Now, like I said, it's going to be windy, so be aware of where you are and the effect of the wind. Okay, we've got to wrap it up. Had uh, we we'll get back into the saddle for starting off a, another year, 2020. We're going to talk about on Monday show about how many shows we've done and, and what the future holds for Panhandle Outdoors. But we're going to wrap it up for today. Thank you all for watching our show. We always appreciate the royalty and, and, and the, the friendship we got off this show. And, we appreciate you, and you do something good today, your fellow man. Have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.